Hey, what's up, everybody? This is D from Brooklyn making a little video from a friend there, Mike Lemming, who was talking about pH and alkalinity stability in his new saltwater reef tank. And uh, there's nothing better than a hands on demonstration and uh, a simple explanation. Uh, you could take a gander see what uh, makes sense to you and if it makes sense to you you do it if not you go through another range now one of the issues that we have when we start a reef and I'll show you with my frag tank is we kind of get caught up on what certain levels should be what they are as far as pH alkalinity calcium so on and so forth and for this reason, a lot of us hit that wall, either trying to chase the levels or maintain them. So I'm going to show you how I maintain the pH using my pinpoint pH probe. And uh, over the years, I've tried a lot of things. A lot of things have hit the market. Uh, some of the preferred methods, Bionic, uh, caulk wasser. Some people use lime water, which is basically similar uh, calcium hydroxide substitute and things of that nature. But... What I use is caulk washer, and I'm going to tell you why as I take the uh, current pH level in my tank. Now, using a pinpoint pH probe, I don't know if you can see it there. Let me bring it a little closer. Let me move that in so you can see my current pH, according to the probe, is 8.13. Now, usually, one thing you want to know. Uh, first and foremost is when you test your pH in tank, you want to do it at two times. And a lot of people don't mention this, but you want to do it two times. You want to do it after the lights have been off for a while, and you want to do it when the lights are on. And I'm going to tell you why. Chemical dispersion and reactions in the tank are different when the lights are off. Uh, Coral and animals, fish, and so on and so forth generate carbon dioxide during the day more than they do at night. And a lot of people don't explain this when they go into pH readings in a tank. You test your pH in the daytime, you are very much likely to get a different level than you do in the evening, which is why most people treat their tanks for pH at night when the pH is the lowest. So if you're looking at that pH reading in my tank and it's 8.3, 9 out of 10, when the lights are on for about two hours, you'll get a reading of anywhere between 8.2 or higher. So you want to dose anything that you're going to dose to your tank. And some people may argue differently. I've been doing it a long time and I found out a lot of these things the hard way. But you want to dose your tank in the evening when the lights have been out for at least an hour or so take your ph reading and see what the level is before you decide to dose now this tank is very small this is a frag tank and as i was mentioning to mike what i'll do when dosing the frag tank is i'll take my little two quart bucket or a gallon bucket this tank is small so i use a two quart container here that i got from home depot which is marked two quarts and since this pH is pretty much close to where I want it I won't necessarily have to dose a lot but what I do dose the calc washer for is to maintain the calcium level so I'm going to use my measuring spoon this measuring spoon is a half a teaspoon I'm actually going to use half of a half a teaspoon and I'm going to tell you why your pH is going to go up significantly based on how much caulk washer you dose. This is a half of a half a teaspoon. They do have a measuring cup that actually shows a pinch. I don't have one. I've always done it this way for the time being. And that is what I'll use for the sake of argument. I'm going to take this. I'm going to mix it into the RO water. Since this is a very small amount, it doesn't take long to dissolve, but you want to stir it for a good amount of time in the RO water. If you're doing a larger tank, 75 gallons or anything like that, and you haven't dosed caulk washer before, I do not recommend you using more than a teaspoon for the first 
application to your tank because you're going to get a skyrocketing uh, change in your pH and you never want to do that especially if you have these guys invertebrates snails coral SPS they don't like dramatic increases in the pH if you want to kill your tank that is the best way to do it. a dramatic raise in the pH will definitely give you what you're not expecting so now I'm going to show you how I dose this tank okay now we're gonna go above the tank where I show you my trick if you have another way a high level above your tank you can do it however you want I do it this way because I have these hooks what I do is I put my container on this hook I raise it at a level anywhere above the tank which is right there and I use an acclimation tube you can get these from bulk reef supply basically it's airline hose with a little hook bend in it I've made it a little longer just for the purpose of this size container that I use so that the hose is actually on the bottom of the container and I have a little clip on the end with a check valve so that I can control just how much goes in or comes out of the hose so now you have your two quart container up there with your caulk washer mix and the good thing about using a small amount you don't have to worry about it caked on the bottom uh, in a forum we were seeing how some people run it through filter floss I run it into my overflow where I have a filter pad this is my little filter pad right here hopefully you can see that this catches all the debris from my water it also catches any thick particles of caulk washer so they're not sitting in my system now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my old mouthpiece here and blow it and then get that suction going until you get that drip at about one per second hopefully you can see that let me move the camera a little closer so you can see that that is coming out very slowly I adjust it to about one drip per second hard to do in hand but there you go and that's all you want you don't want it faster than that that's perfect right there a little slower even I'll clip it over here in my tank make sure that it's secure Boop. clear all the air out of the line so that it doesn't stop and get it back to that one drip clap it on and you're ready to go now the beautiful thing about this is it's slow so you don't have to worry about it overdosing your tank because you know no matter what happens it's not going to send more than two quarts there we go now I got one hand free it, no matter what happens it's not going to send more than two quarts of that caulk washer mix into your tank also you want to just make sure that it is secure and over the filter pad if you have that in your tank otherwise you can use a sump if you have a filter sock you can put it in your filter sock that's also a good area but this will definitely help in maintaining alkalinity and calcium and it will also do wonders for maintaining the pH level but once again I stress the first time you dose this into your tank I would use no more than a teaspoon for a gallon of water you don't want to exceed it anytime you're making any changes to your reef tank you want them to be very subtle and slow so that you don't go off the deep end now since this is jumping uh, dropping into my overflow let me take a quick test of the water and let's see if you can notice any noticeable change with just this little bit dripping in there all right let me move me old squeaky stand there all right make sure i got the probe in the tank all right and what was it before 8.13 uh, all right 8.2 8.13 if that had jumped any more than a degree 
I know that that drip is too fast because I just started it and you don't want it jumping immediately. If you put your probe in where your drip line is going and it has jumped that much more than where you started in that short period of time, you're dripping too much people. You don't want that noticeable change happening that fast. So this is where, right where I wanna be. I can see my line still dripping and that's the easiest way. So I just made this video just to help a lot of people. I see that question coming a lot. This is how I do it. This is how I've done it a long time. I have used two part, which is also a good product. I like it for a larger system. I wouldn't use two part in this small system because it's really easy to overdose in a small system. And the caulk washer, as long as you can control how much you're mixing to the RO, is very, very easy to introduce to the tank. And like I mentioned before, not only will it maintain your pH, which you don't really have to chase. As long as your corals are happy, you don't have to run around chasing the pH. But it will maintain the pH, it will maintain the calcium, and it will maintain the alkalinity. And it will not harm these guys as long as you don't drastically raise the pH. Drastically raising the pH will lead to pH shock. And invertebrates and coral are very, very susceptible to pH shock. Fish can deal with it a lot better than coral and inverts can. But you don't want any animals dying. So this is from my man Mike and anybody else controlling the pH, calcium, and alkalinity in a smaller system. This is D signing out. Keeping it very short, simple, and to the point. Keeping my sanity by keeping my aquariums. Until next time, I'm going to stop bothering my fish. Because he's looking like he's flipping me to bird as he's trying to sleep. And I'm going to turn the lights out. Good night, Ozzy and Harriet. Yeah, he's telling me get the hell out of here. Hi, right, everybody. Tank on. See ya. Lights out.